Hey, this is Flash at the Drop in the Coil show on reallibertymedia.com. And we're going to have uh, Larry Woods and, ooh, excuse me, Rob, Rob Works will be guiding you through the <coughs> electronic world tonight. Anyway, thanks. Thanks to the Grimner for <coughs> giving us somewhere to go to cough and spew and choke and share our wisdom. And uh, we have, uh, <coughs> we're open to the chat as the RLM chat room from reallibertymedia.com for your bots and bodies tonight on that. We've got uh, Barman, Beetle, Cowboy Tech, Grimnir, Moose Girl, Kate, Anti, Esmo, Circulo, Me, Frumpy, Frumpy Work, Gram Z, J Dread, Meister Brow, Prince, Rob Works the Bubbler, Trust, Number One, uh, Vanna White, Weather Dork, Woodman, The Phantom, Anti underscore Chascura, Chloe, Singular, Cyborg Noodle, E Man, Ensive, Gromit, J's Nines, J's, Kiss, uh, Met, WJ2002, Pone Size, Sock Puppet, A Sock. Uh, mm, Salt Lake City, Mike out there in Utah, smart ass, and the holy is Roger. And uh, that's the lineup for your uh, bots and bodies to chatter with while we're doing the show today. And I think Larry and Rob, they gave, gave me three choices. So can I pick a link to start with for you guys to uh, open the show with? You mind if I do that? Sure, go for it. Okay, and the one I'm going to open first is Pyramid. Mathematics, and I think it says C A L. So that'd be calc. I don't know what the end is. It's got dot dot dot. But I'm opening up a copy for the real end. Uh, RL and chatters to see what I'm talking about. And here you go, Rob and Larry. There you go, guys. Thank what? you very much. Okay, so that's a, a pyramid of mathematics. I'm just going to open that. It says on the, on the side it was removed. Well, no, that's Miss Kate. Calculating the SECAD. S-E-K-E-D. Okay, it opened. We got dead air going on here, Russ. So, uh, hmm. that usually makes for an interesting show when we start. Right. Where'd Larry go? Yeah. I'm here, Larry. I'm here. You can't have dead air, you guys. I'm okay. planning his strategy, and I'm, I'm keeping the audience on the edge of their seat in anticipation. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'd, I'd just like to talk about the pyramids today, and and sort of explain a little bit about how they might have worked, how I feel that they work, and uh, see how many people say I'm full of soup. Um, but the, the the base of the pyramid is forty three hundred and uh, forty three thousand two hundred something, <laughs> which is which is the circumference of the Earth, and a lot of the angles and uh, distances that are plotted and the weights that are plotted are base numbers of some some multiple of that number for the circumference of the Earth, the distance to the Sun, uh, the distance between the major monuments, some of them, uh, the the amount of land mass that we've got. There's there's a lot of stuff in it, and they use the uh, a different kind of math than we use to uh, figure the angles and the slope on the sides of the pyramid. There's five different pyramid shapes. Uh, actually, there's six because they left step pyramid out, but that didn't count. Uh, 
that are used all over Africa and other places that there are pyramids. Uh, the 30 degree angles, the, the just a lot of different angles to the slope of them. Uh, that's about all I wanted to say about that. You can look at the video and, and find out how they do the fake head, which is the angle of the base. They use right angles and uh, just figured it from that. It's basic trigonometry, basic algebra. Uh, but it's using cubits and, and things like that to figure the distances. So it's interesting math, that's all. Uh, and the next one, I can get to it. Is in the series of three? Yeah, yeah in the series of three. Okay, it would be, uh, I got Ancient Aliens. Oh, you know that? yeah, that'd be, that'd be uh, fun. I'll put a copy in the main feed. Okay. Yeah, the, the Ancient Aliens, I'm, I'm not real sure that aliens actually did this. However, uh, I do think that it's possible that we've had more intelligent uh, civilizations on the earth than, than where we are now. Uh, I'm a firm believer that over a course of 400 million years that man has been on this planet and that's been proven. We've either got time travel in the future or man has been here for 400 million years or more. Uh, there are batteries that are found in coal deposits that are that old. There's an iron pipe running through a limestone that is from, uh, it's, it's an iron that we can't or don't make today because of its composition. It's been there for so long that the limestone has formed inside of that pipe uh, and it's in 200, 000, or 200 million year old rock. So things like that, a computer chip in stone that's 200 million years old. Uh, this can't be coincidence. I just think that maybe if it was aliens, that's really sweet. But if it wasn't, I think that we've had super advanced civilization for millions of years on this planet that rise and fall. And if you think about it, let's, let's go back to the Roman times so it would be easier instead of today because we just steal shit. Back in the Roman times, they would conquer a nation, collect all its information, burn their books, kill their priests who were the keepers of the books, who were the, the keepers of knowledge. They were the, the scientists, the electricians, the plumbers, the, everything else, the great civic builders. And we go in and we kill them all, and we take their knowledge so that we have it, but we destroy the public amount of their knowledge so that nobody else can get it. So our elite, or whoever is controlling the world, has the knowledge, and the rest of us are being pushed back into the Stone Ages. That's um, right. I just, I have a really dislike for, uh, for human civilization. All we now have to do is destroy, take, throw away. Um, maybe not. Yeah, but we're pretty good at it. Oh, yeah, we're good at it. You know, years ago, I was teasing Mary when we were doing radio that uh, Palestine was just practice land for what the Jews were going to do to the United States. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. Well, everybody and, uh, else, not just the United the, States. Well, I was, that's what I said. I was picking on the States at the time. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, well, I was being a smartass, but, uh, 
this guy that yeah. got killed the other day. She, yeah, I was right. <laughs> I was killing time because we were, I don't know, between stories. All right. <laughs> That's what I do around here. Sweep up. <laughs> anyway, so, Rob, do you have anything to add on to that? What Larry was on? Because I heard you bubbling in the background, so I figured you're, you're just planning your to, attack. I wasn't bubbling. Oh, it must have been me. <laughs> okay, but I figured yeah, somebody was. Agree. Let's you celebrate. Know, we've been mobile. We've been uh, taught and trained that you know war is the solution to everything, and and uh, hmm. societies. Well, everybody knows we've been dumped down, and and we're basically like they said we're being pushed backwards while. The privileged and elite have, have, are uh, leap years ahead of us. Yeah. Yeah, and Khufu did not build the Great Pyramid. He built the Step Pyramid that was built after the Great Pyramid. Right. Uh, the, the Great Pyramid, in my mind, is a power generation station. Uh, and uh, I think I've posted a, a sort of a picture of a map of the, the Great Pyramid from many years ago because they recently found new chambers. But at the, at the, under the pyramid, in the stone, I think at 177 feet below the, the rock that's under the, the pyramid, is a room that is roughly cut, but there's a stream going to it. It's on the water table. And that room, I think in the old days, would fill up with water. And when you, when you move water through limestone, it generates electricity. When you move water through granite, it generates electricity. So... This room is connected by electrically conductive tunnels going up into the Baghdad battery room. And if it wasn't just from the generation of the water flowing through that room, if that room filled up and sloshed and bumped against the ceiling, that would create a pulsed generation throughout the entire pyramid. One way or another, they generated power in this room. The electrically conductive tunnel went up to the Baghdad battery room. And everybody knows what a Baghdad battery is. The bigger you make them, the more power you can get out of them. And most of their batteries, there were some of the small ones that looked like a coconut and a lot of great big ones. So that charge gave them an extra charge to put in these electrically conductive tunnels that go to every room in the pyramid. The Queen's Chamber is the first one above that. When they first opened the Queen's Chamber, they found mineral salts all over the walls. That means that this chamber produced hydrogen through electrolysis because of the tunnel. From the Queen's Chamber, there's another electrically conductive chamber, a tunnel, that goes up to what they call the Grand Gallery. Well, the Grand Gallery has got slots on the top and bottom of it that were put there for tuning reeds, wood, metal, whatever, that when the hydrogen gas whistled through it, it created a microwave frequency. This microwave frequency went up through the Grand Gallery into the King's Chamber. Now, the King's Chamber has got five huge blocks on top of it, big, huge blocks that are perfect on three sides. And on the, on the side that nobody can see, They've got pits and drilled holes and everything in them. 
that was used to tune those specific stones to some specific frequency. The reason that the pyramid no longer works is because one of those stones is cracked and no longer produces the proper frequency, as well as most of the inner core of the pyramid is made out of electrically conductive some sort, either it's piezoelectric or actual electric conductive stones. <laughs> These stones generated the power that was necessary to to form the energy in the, in the pyramid. But on the outside of the pyramid, they were layered with calcite, a non-conductive stone. What that did was concentrate all of the power up through the apex, the very top of the pyramid, to project that power just like a Tesla tower. And the obelisks that were placed all over the world were collecting stations. And the pyramids all over the world collected or generated the, that power. Uh, Angkor Wat is a gigantic capacitor bank that stored that power for them in Cambodia. Uh, and if you if you look at the pyramid complexes, they are also connected from each of the temples on the pyramid complex with electrically conducting tunnels that go between each different structure. Look at that from way above. Look at the Mayan complexes, the, the complex of the Temple of the Sun. Those are macro computer systems. We do everything micro, everything little tiny these days. They did everything with the building material that they had and made them all big. So... Uh, hey, Larry? Yeah. Are, are there maps on the Internet to these pyramids? that are accurate to your knowledge? Uh, as far as location or the tunnel systems? Yeah, all, all the things that you were described, I, I assume you've read about it, but I mean, are there maps in detail and people, have they gone through all that and made it public yet? Uh, it's secretive. Some, some of them are public, some of them are being squashed by the Egyptian Historical Society that claims it's all religious. And, yeah, it was all religious because the priests were the ones that had the knowledge. But it's real knowledge. Yeah, and then uh, Grimner wanted to know, and so did I. I didn't get a chance to ask this. What the hell is a Baghdad battery? Oh, okay, sorry. I never even heard it until you just said it. And you said, everybody knows. And I figured everybody electronic one maybe knows. <laughs> Your level of the game, but or Rob's, but because okay. Rob seemed to know, but uh, you know what? I don't know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> a, a Baghdad battery is a clay jar with a copper cylinder that is wrapped in tar, real, real thick tar, it's, uh, to insulate it, and they would pour like any kind of electrolyte or any kind of acid in that battery, like lemon juice or uh, any anything that was acidic into the battery. And you could actually, actually get about a volt and a half out of the small jars that were about coconut size. So between the inside copper tube that's insulated and the liquid. So it's it's just just a, a power storage system. Just it's a, it is amazing to find out though at, at this time in life that how far back this stuff really goes. Oh yeah, there so were electroplating things back in Egypt far beyond. Right, but the way that you know I grew up in, in with my education system, they were. They made it seem like the past was so ignorant. They didn't know how to do anything. And I just always had this feeling that, no, nah, maybe not. And then when I listened to what yeah, you talked about, that 
Well, you know, you're going to only live, what, 100 years if you're really, really lucky, 100 years where you're still lucid. So a lot can happen before and after 100 years that there's no witnesses to it. We're just being told the story of a story of a story. There's no physical proof, just the story of the story. Kind of like religion. Yeah, kind of like religion. Oh, the mysterious alien in the sky that created everything. Well, you know what? The way the world is, who knows? I mean, it's not. I'm not saying it is or it isn't. I'm just saying it's possible. I have I have come to that decision in life that no matter how fucked up and bizarre you think things could be, they can always get weirder. Mm-hmm. So maybe no matter what I think I am or where I came from, could be wrong could be something else. I think that there's a mathematical formula that describes everything in one formula. And whether or not that is made by some creature and and began by some creature, I have no idea. But I'm almost positive that there's one formula that will describe everything that there is. Mm-hmm. It's, like the, it's like what I call the Holy Trinity. Vibration, electricity, and magnetism. Everything that there is, from a photon to the entire universe, has those three qualities. They all resonate at a different frequency. That's why you have different objects. Well, they spend a lot of time explaining this differently to us when we're growing up. Or maybe not explaining it to us and and diverting the time with other useless shit that we were not designed to even be, remember we ever learned. Yeah, it, it's not explaining it to us. Because when I was in college for years and years and years, they told us that electricity was volts, amps, and ohms. Once in a while we got into frequency so that uh, electrical devices could operate in a standardized way. But... They never told us that you can increase the frequency and generate electricity through frequency. That was See, never, wait, that was it, never. Yeah, it, it's the generate it through frequency part. They can hold a cell phone in the freaking hand, Larry. But if you ever say wireless electricity, that same personal panic. What? No. Oh. They don't understand because we've been scared and manipulated and believe in a lot of other shit. And Tesla's oh, single wire circuit, the the single wire circuit of Tesla, that's a great thing, but it can all be done with coils. Yeah, you yeah. don't need all that electronic garbage that's going to be putting spikes into your system unless you're one of those guys that just want to collect the counter EMF, the spikes. And go for it, boys. You're going to get milliamps, and I'm getting mega amps. I'm getting so, so competition. Amps. Yeah, the yeah. results are better. Yeah. Well, you so, think you would think that with, a lot of people right now are bamboozled by the batteries and the, what do you call it, solar panels and all that stuff. Uh, and I've uh, always been laughed at for being against it because I think that the the amount of money they put in doesn't never uh, generate a, a profit. Exactly. You know, it's a wasted, it's a beautiful idea and it looks pretty and everything, but you're wasting your money. You're not getting anywhere. No, you're not. And you got to replace your batteries every five or six years at thousands of dollars. Solar panels, let's, let's just look at solar panels. It takes 300% more energy to make a solar panel than it makes in its entire lifetime. Solar panels are a whole bunch of very low amperage photovoltaic cells attached wired in series. When one of them goes out being wired in series, that means just like your Christmas tree lights, none of them work. Okay, so they throw that away. That's toxic waste. On top of it all, yeah. Yeah, on top of it all. And, so, and not only that, it, it depending on where you got them, you got to clean them. Oh, yeah, you got to clean them. 
They, they, well, you don't have to, but they won't be efficient if you don't. Right. they will get cluttered with sand and grit. And the, the ones and down in the desert? Yeah. They yeah, got to have to all the time. Yeah. So they have to have a machine operating to clean the panels so they can collect. See, it's like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Too much waste. And it, but it's still, it sounds so much nicer than burning fuel, but it's the same source. So, well, even okay. though, in it, yeah, oh well, mind. it's the same source, but it takes more energy to create them than they produce. True. So you've got to right. put in more power plants, burning coal and fossil fuels to hmm. keep them to keep them manufactured. That's not that's not free energy. No, 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 no. That that word will scare just about anybody. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Free and energy at Rob's house. Oh, yeah. yeah. Get ready for the knee jerks. <laughs> You'd be so popular. And the big windmills. They, they put out such a harmful thump, thump, thump because they are all, all uh, have limiters on them for the rotational speed so they don't burn out the capacitors. But they all put out such a bad frequency that animals will not graze under these these windmills. That land is totally useless to any kind of critter. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. what good are and they? And I, I find it hard to believe that these brilliant people don't, they, they overlook these little details. <laughs> you know, it's like, a, uh, like anything in our life. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. Well, we found out that, that was wrong. We, well, I never had to find out. I, I had it kind of shown to me at an early age about reality. Life ain't what you think it is. You'll see it one way, but it won't be, never be what you think. Years will go by and you'll look back and you'll, whatever that was, wow, that wasn't what I thought at the time. Mm -hmm. And here we are, 2020, and we got lockdowns. Free TV sets at the right store. Yes. Don't get caught. <laughs> anyway, so I interrupt. <laughs> I interrupted Larry's uh, secret formula for that. I have no idea why. Guess I just felt chatty. That's all right. But on the questions, because uh, I was really thinking about all this. Uh, how much of this stuff is laid out to the public? You know, and not in the fashion of you know, like a the Hitchhiker's Guide, where they put it in. You know. It's, Underneath the jaguar cage in the basement, <laughs> where you never go, so it's there, but you would never look there to find it. Yeah. Okay, well that's what I'm asking. You're the one that's educated by the, you know, by the educators, and then you're the one that says they were wrong. So I figure your personal input would be way different than mine, because you went through it and can be the opposite decision most people get. Yeah, what what they teach you in school about electricity is that it's three-dimensional. Well, they don't add in the frequency very often, except with equipment. And they don't ever consider the magnetic fields. Never. The only, the only time a magnetic field is considered is when you're putting in a battery backup or a diesel backup to a central office. Those folks know about this. The electrical companies know about this, but the common man doesn't. And that is when you have to put up the Faraday cage in the battery or the power room to prevent that bad energy, the, the RF frequencies, the EM frequencies, from affecting the communication equipment. That's why you have to turn your cell phone off when the, when the jet is landing and taking off because they do that by computer. The man lets go of the steering wheel and everything happens automatically. So it's you don't want any interference in that signal. Okay, and now... Go ahead. When you go... Yeah, you know, we brought up that certain signals, and I started to wonder about this one. Are we looking at a fear-based tax coming to us 
because of all the uh, 5G installation. You know, the timing of the COVID, people getting sick, the rumors of 5G is bad for you. If you depends on where you look to find your information. Okay. Right, Larry? Okay. okay, yeah. Uh, 5G, the way it's coming out, the way that, that China has produced it, is harmful. The, we, I personally gave the proper frequencies to a general, a, a marine general, the, the guy that was in charge of Desert Storm. He, he planned the whole thing out. But I personally gave him the proper frequencies for both the Tesla towers that they got in Waco and 5G. I'm relatively certain at this point that Trump is going to use those frequencies. Now, whether the rest of the world falls in line and does the same thing, I do not know. But I kind of think that they will. Um, this, with the proper frequencies, 5G is a military sound weapon, whether you can hear it or not. It's a frequency designed weapon that is designed for crowd control. Any frequency that they want to project over that, they can project at millions of times a second. That means that they can make you sick, they can make you fall down, they can make you angry. Anything they want to, they can destroy any organ in your body, whether it's you specifically through your cell phone or a group of people through their cell phones. It's all That's not the way it's sold, though, Larry. It's no. sold in a different fashion altogether. Right, and just because we want convenience, we want it faster. And not only that, it is complete 100% surveillance no matter where you are. A lot of people want that protection from the bad guys. <laughs> uh, but who are the bad guys? <laughs> well, okay. There, there's two worlds to live in. One is you have excess, and the other is you, the rest of us. You're getting by or you have you don't have enough or you're getting by. And then there's the people that have plenty and then some. And there's millions and millions of them. You know, they're out there. There's loads and loads of them. So they can afford to run out of us. Oh, yeah. They will not miss us one bit. And things seem to be getting worse. You're just another human but, resource. Well, yeah, but I smell attacks coming off this COVID thing somehow. They're going to slap us all with a new tax. That I don't know why. Tax. Tax. Well, but, but, the, the, the test for it have got the microchip. The Gates test has got the tiny, tiny microchip that you can barely see when it's on your finger. And that's going to go straight up in your nose. Every time they shove that Q-chip up there, it's got that on it. Wow. So the, test, the tests for this are going to have it. The vaccine is going to have that. Everybody is going to be chipped, and they're going to know where you are, what you're doing all the time. Unless you opt out and go cashless. Or well, go cash instead, whatever, it, whatever barter system there is. Yeah, you're going to have to barter because if Gates gives his way, everybody's going to get the vaccine one way or another. You yeah. Can't, you can't yeah. do monetary transactions without the vaccine. Without it, yeah. So, see, they, they might have Cirque, but they won't get me. <laughs> yep. Well, but even, then, you know, I'll be at her mercy for food and stuff, but that'll be okay. I trust her. I trust her to feed me. Should shit hit the fan. <laughs> even if you use an e-impulse to kill that, then you won't have access to your account. Now, does yeah. this... Does this really pay off on small communities of 10,000 or so, or is this really only necessary in a big city, this 5G? I mean, is it pointless to put it in small places like where we live? It's pointless to put it anywhere. All it, well, does, I, all it does for the common man is increase the speed of your download. <laughs> that, Do you that part? Yeah, I understand. Yeah. 
I don't want to wait 20 minutes for a movie to download. I want it in eight <laughs> seconds. Okay, put that cell phone in your pocket and go sterile because we don't need your ass. Oh, I still don't have a cell phone. I was talking about that the other day with a buddy. Said, you know, to some of these folk around me that don't know me and whatnot, they go, wow, that poor old man, he doesn't even have money for a cell phone. <laughs> you know, look at how his clothes, look at how badly he dresses. Fathom that you don't want yeah. one. Well, huh? They I didn't even fathom that, they don't, that you don't want one. They just assume you're too poor to have one. Yeah, yeah. That, well, that's how people, when they don't know you, of yeah. course, they judge from a distance. Yeah. Of course. Well, I wouldn't be some millionaire living here. <laughs> all, the well, panhandle, yeah. all the panhandlers in my area dress better than I do. <laughs> okay, but, well, I don't know. There's just people People in the world have been conditioned, Rob, you know that, different, yeah. differently, but the same. In the, in, wait a minute. That sounded ridiculous. How do I mean it is? <laughs> uh, we've, it's been done differently from place to place, but the results are the same. No matter where you go, you get treated exactly the fucking same as the place you were just at. Yeah. It just might be in a different accent or... A, but people are people. They're all the fucking same. And, in, and unless you go somewhere with an attitude and you're... It's like your wavelengths and your frequencies, right, Larry? Yes, sir. You present the attitude you wish to receive. And it's almost invaluable. It's hard to have people be nasty to you in public place when you're being nice to them. That's right. Okay, Larry. Well, I want to go back yeah. to the pyramids. Okay. No. Uh, so I was looking for some. I was actually looking for some pictures or diagrams of the mine. There's one in particular I saw that was real. Uh, uh, obviously, you could tell. But uh, while doing that, I noticed uh, all the Mayan pyramids are like step pyramids, and then they have the the steps going up all four sides with the square room at the top. You know, yeah, that, you know what I mean? That's the focal point. Yeah, let's talk about what's the difference between that type of pyramid and the Great Pyramid, uh, the Great Pyramid being a... a a generator. Are these generators too, or they have different purposes, or what do you think about that? Those those are generators, but mostly they're generators for that complex. Uh -huh. uh, the the apex of those is cut off. Uh, the the point at the top is cut off and flattened, and there's a room built on top of it, right. and that room is where the energy was gathered. Okay. And it, then it just went back down through the pyramid into the tunnels under the complex that connect everything. Right. And if you look at the, the pyramid of the sun complex, that one, you can see the different components and even identify them if you know how to make computers. Right. There, there's a CPU there, there's a power supply there, which is the pyramid. The CPU is the first, the first and closest temple, and that's a square temple just like a CPU. It goes on to the different capacity temples that are the ones with the with the tops on them. It's it's the computer guys can look at those and tell what every component is. Uh, and and that's that's the same with the with the, the pyramids at Giza. They're not only uh, maps of the sky of the of the belt of Orion. It it's just it's real obvious to me. One side looks uh, uh, the king's chamber has got two viewing ports in it. One looks toward Orion's belt, and the other one looks toward the Pleiades. So those are communication points to send out those particular frequencies. Yeah, I just posted a, a diagram of that Pyramid of the Sun in the chat room. Yeah, yeah. So people can kind of see what we're yeah. talking about. And you can, you can see what they do. 
Um, okay. Yeah, I won't go into that right now. Uh, there, there, there are different levels of energy that can come out of them, different controlling structures, and they're also all just connected with the, with the conductive tunnels just to distribute the power. Yeah. And and people will say, well, you can't go into it while it's, while it's conducting electricity. Yeah, you can, because you're exactly the same potential as the power output. Yeah, you're standing in the flow, not receiving it. Yeah. Okay, so I'm looking at this diagram. Do you see it? Yeah. Okay, you know there's a river going through there. Oh, yeah. That's to provide the power for the temple. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. That yes. goes through. And so that's a constant flow of uh, power, basically. Right. Yeah. yeah. Without having to turn a wheel or oh, anything. Right. The river in itself is a generator. Yes. Just uh, passing through the granite or whatever type of stone that is. Yeah. It's all conductive, whether it's granite or limestone. Say hi to Chloe. Hello, Chloe. Hi, Chloe. <clears throat> so, that's that's the type of thing that was fascinating me. That's what I was trying to get to. These diagrams, these pyramid temple complexes. There, were, there, there was another one that was really... I can't find it at the moment, but... Uh, there was another one that was just really obviously. I mean, you could tell. Oh yeah. The way it's yeah, I'm, out. I'm sure the electronics people can see that in these things. Yeah. So that's always been real fascinating to me. <laughs> yeah, I don't look at these things as being something religious. My God lives outside. He doesn't live in a building. <laughs> right. So, yeah. So. But it, I, I see things as generators, as computer systems, as any kind of a motor. The cave drawings that have the stick men in them uh -huh. and, and the little round circles by their waist, yeah. that, that's a plasma generator. And the round circle around their waist is the plasma event. Huh. Uh, the, the triple spirals with two spirals going clockwise and one spiral going counterclockwise. That's a pancake coil system that generates electricity. Huh. Uh, it, it's, it's obvious to me. Uh, take a Japanese pagoda. A pagoda is made on a central post. There's one gigantic post that goes up to the middle, and every floor is attached with a rope to that post. So that's, a, that's an earthquake proofing that they use. But that's also the design of a plasma generator. Uh, no, of a proton accelerator, excuse me. As the power comes up to the center, each different level is a coil of some sort that intensifies that beam as it goes up higher and higher across each one of the floors. Okay. It's also, that's how they designed them for, for earthquakes so that the floor would rock on the ropes instead of the building getting shot, uh, shaken down. Right. But I see that as a design for a proton accelerator that came from the ancients. I don't know. Just weird stuff I think about. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, I don't feel left out now. <laughs> you got to think about the weird stuff. Uh oh, I have to. Well, it's, it's handy to keep you sane. Oh, now I'm sane? Wow, this is getting good. 
Yeah, why I've do you know been called, I've never been called sane before. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to handle this. It's a you special are, moment. You are in the state of sane. You are insane. Well, that uh, now you're going to get true with the definition. But, uh, <laughs> can, can I interrupt with a thought? With a thought, please comment here. No, yeah. Moose uh, Moose was Moose wrote here. Just cops do not care about you or anyone, and it reminded me of a YouTube link I wanted to post in the main feed of the RLN chat, and I think I'll put it in the notes of the show too. And sorry to interrupt the electronics for this, but it's about the uh, law enforcement has no duty to protect you, and it's not new; it's old, yeah. old. Uh, Old Supreme news. Court ruling from many years down to anyway. Yeah. Yeah, somebody so I thought because you might want to see it. Yeah. 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 And Please. the Supreme Court said, Nope. They're not under any obligation to protect you. I uh, that was one of those weird thought interruption times. I they, tried to not do that. <laughs> they're there to serve summonses and protect their income. Ah. Ah, ah, shit, I can't close it. Uh-oh, can't generate close revenue. it. There we go. Okay, sorry, guys. I I should have muted. <laughs> but uh, anyway, whoops. Just making the show more fun, Rob. <laughs> yeah, no, I like the comedy. You're never going to get hear a complaint from me to, uh, when you go to bitching at cops or about cops. Good. No, I know. Oh boy, me and uh, me and Cirque were reading a little bit of discomfort over the last couple of days over the police on Darlin. The cops acted up huge. Did somebody in again? I don't know why it's so different than the, any other time they killed somebody, but for some reason. Yeah, they only do it uh, at least three times a day on average. Right. So, okay. So, of all the murders the cops commit, why this one and why and where it's at? Because it got recorded and then it got uh, promoted. So, this is they got caught kind of thing? or uh, uh, That's part of it. I mean, there's a lot of them that have gotten caught. I mean, we, we post them in the right. all the time. You know? So, they shot, right. a, so they why shot a 14 year old so kid the other, you know, not too long ago um, running away from them. In the back, Charmin right, back. right. But you know. this one, they get they get all this um, riot and shit. And the first thing I heard out of it was, "Well, that's probably Soros doing that." How how do you do? How do you pay people to riot? <laughs> We're gonna have a riot. <laughs> this is the day. You buy mercenaries. Yeah. Hmm. You don't need to, well, you don't need to pay the whole crowd. All you need to no, do is pay a few not. instigators to go in there and start a fire here and there, break a few windows, get people riled up, and the rest will take care of itself. It, Soros funded the the refugee caravans from from yeah. Guatemala from Guatemala up to the United States. Those people would have had to travel on foot forty five miles a day. That's impossible. Not even a marathon yeah, no, can cover 45 miles in a day. They were bust. They have cell yeah. phones. If you're poor and leaving the country because you can't eat, you're sure as hell not going to have a cell phone. They had clean clothes on it. If you were walking all day in the dirt, you wouldn't have clean clothes. No, I sure I never did when I did it. No. I've yeah. been in the desert. That's you know, like at, uh, desert is. G20 meeting, meeting they had back in Canada a couple of years ago. Um, they actually caught some of those agent provocateurs, um, cornered them, and because uh, they were all masked up, and uh, mm-hmm. they got them cornered, and were calling them out, and they crossed the line. They went behind the cops. The cops let them through, and could, you know, let them out. And so, uh, I'm sure Moose remembers that and, and the other people that are paying attention. Don't want them to get caught. Wonder what's going to come of all this, though. Didn't look very good what I saw on the internet. 
And when, when I looked for stuff in other places, there wasn't anything. Pre, uh, you know, today, everything was about Minnesota. Saint, uh, not St. Paul, Minneapolis. Yeah. Graham just posted another link about that. Uh, the but isn't there a any cop a dead ringer for actor ex-con Jonathan Lee Riches? Yeah. A seemingly staged event. Well, what they showed you on the video. Well, wow, there you go. Boy, I'm I'm getting used to this. You know, seeing something in, on the idiot box and then being told that's not what you saw. <laughs> huh? <laughs> but that's yeah. not. Yeah, uh, that's not what it was. It was something else. The same crisis actors and getting killed in four or five different crises. Yeah. Boy, well, I, I wish I had so that kind much. of life. Yeah. I thought this was a, a cop killer, though. I mean, a cop. Being the killer, killer cop, yeah, so, uh, yeah, no, that's what it's uh, talking I'm, about. Is this cop? That <laughs> well, anyway, so the all the violence that's going on, they, they've got enough reason all over the country to to continue to do it. I just don't know if they are or not because nobody's telling me. I have no idea. Yeah. Oh, uh, and then this Danish crap, man. This little living on the fucking coast of some island there's nothing going on here the, and all the drama from this COVID hasn't affected us at all yet except for they shut a few businesses down for a bit yeah. but everything came back and people are holding hands and walking arm in arm got the kids everywhere slobbering all over each other like nothing ever happened yeah yeah and the the consensus of whoever's talking is uh, that fucking government they did all that for nothing so wow I don't think they'll pull this off a second time here and then of course back in the states you got bigger problems than the COVID now with the rioting and you yeah. just all you have to do is put them all on the right frequency Larry and they all get along yeah exactly. they don't know that but they, they don't they don't know it's the food and the electricity and all these things that we have in, in, getting into us that make us do all the sick shit we do. Mm -hmm. Chloe just posted a, a picture, an actual picture of the diagram thing that I just posted. It's a picture oh. of, uh, looking down the uh, avenue of the dead. So that, that's the square right there in the middle. That's the what you would, were calling the CPU, which was the... Was the uh, right. Yeah, that does yeah. look like the inside, doesn't it? Yeah. You want that in the, um, and, in the notes, guys? Sure. Okay. Sure. Sure. And if you look at that from straight down, it looks even more like a computer. Yeah, it looks like that diagram. <laughs> yeah. Not only that, but, you know, when people guide you along the road to know what you're looking at, that helps a lot. Well, yeah. You know, if I wasn't aware of what you were talking about and I looked at the picture, I wouldn't see the similarity about the computer. Okay, too. so the angle uh, that you're looking at it on the picture itself, yeah. it looks like you're looking down over the pyramid of the moon onto the avenue. Right, but I, w I came out of this, uh, the part where I didn't already have an interest in all this stuff. So I've learned these things since I started following what Larry's been talking about. So I'm seeing these things without, but I'm aware of them because I was introduced to them already. You know, otherwise I would be completely confused about what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But now that I've done you know, I, do you remember we did a couple of shows back where he put up pictures of uh, places that look like the, these freaking circuit boards? Yeah. Well, maybe that's the wrong name for it. Uh, circuits? Yeah, yeah. Circuit, circuit board. That's exactly yeah. what it is. But they're big places, but if you look at yeah. you look at the, they're the same fucking thing. Right. Yeah. There wow. Was I, I was there a long game. time ago. I haven't been able to find again when... Google Maps first came out with the satellite imaging. There's a place in the ocean, and I can't even remember where it is. It's over in, in the other continent. Um, the European, northeastern 
uh, Europe or it seems like it was called in the northern way northern hemisphere. Anyway, in the place. Baltic Sea. Huh? In the Baltic Sea? Possibly. It's been I don't know, ten years ago when I seen this thing. Back when the the satellite imaging thing first started really becoming a thing. But there's a place under the ocean where there's lines and I mean it totally just looks like a circuit board. I wish I could find that again. Uh, well, they're all over, and the reason that most of these that we that are are tourist traps, the reason that most of them don't work is because of the degradation of the pyramids, or people coming and stealing the outside layers off the pyramids for building materials or things like that. If you go to the Bosnian pyramid that's still covered with dirt, that pyramid is emitting a beam, uh, no, it's receiving a beam from the top of it, from the apex, the point on the pyramid. Uh-huh. And you can, you know it's receiving it because the farther up you go from the top of that pyramid, the stronger the signal is. So it's receiving it from outer space. So some of these pyramids are receivers, and some of them are transmitters. Uh, Just like different coil arrangements. Some of them are receiver coils. Some of them are transmitters. We make a coil that's a quarter wave antenna. Right. And it's picking up the energy from the surrounding areas. It's easy when you know why things work. Right. Yeah, how, why, where. Now it's always easy when you know why. Ha, ha, ha. So, you see, you must be one of those science fellows and you have a formula. <laughs> now you just got two brain cells to run together. Yeah, well, I know some of the whys. <laughs> it, it's like it's like a, a TV show or a movie or whatever always has a, a recipe to it. You know, you can't have a spontaneous film that wouldn't interest anyone. It would be just as dull as real life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I cannot find so they have images to, again. They have to do all this crap in ninety minutes and take you from you know birth to the moon. How do we get conned into believing that instead of just accepting that's a form of entertainment, period? That's it. But somehow it seems like it, it forms the way you look at science and religion and politics, society. If, you know what I mean, TV? Brainwashed by the boob tube. Well, yeah, but I believe it's true. I don't think I'm immune to it either. I think I just don't participate. I'll watch the movies, but they're still they're entertainment to me. It's not like, yeah. wow, that's how electricity was invented, huh? Yeah. Well, it's been shown that uh, when you sit down in front of a TV, it puts you into a, uh, what's that called, the beta wave state or whatever they call it. Puts you into well, a perceptive would, mental Wouldn't that be the state. same with the computer, though? Huh? Wouldn't it be the same thing as the computer? It could be done with the computer, too, but you have control over what you view on the computer. Yeah. Whereas so it's the TV. Oh, the the everything coming over what the you're TV, watching. Everything yeah. coming on those signals. It doesn't matter what's playing on the TV. It's the frequency that your brain is interpreting it at. It's like small children playing in a room. As soon as a commercial comes on, they are locked into the TV. Yeah, I mean, whatever. I don't know. I, I don't remember it. Whatever process they're using to create that is it, it's demonstrably happening. Hmm. Just like Larry said, you stick some kids in the room, turn the TV on, and boom, there it's like moss to the flame. Wow. Well, I guess I grew up in dirt. I, I don't know. Yeah, we grew like, up in the dirt and dirt. stuff like that. I mean, we had TV, and I, I was right there with everybody, you know, every night. 
Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, it's seeing, I was in the swimming pool. And, or I was and, always trying to get out. Dude. And parents these days are using the TV for a babysitter. Oh, yeah. It's oh, disgusting. Yeah. It's just the way it oh, yeah, it was available to us. But we, we had freedom bikes to go where we wanted to go. We weren't, you know, locked down in the house or any of that. Yeah, yep. but if we chose to stay in the house, we did have the TV as an option, but it wasn't. Well, yeah, now you can't even let your kids play out in the yard without some Karen calling the cops on you. Wow, yeah. uh, come on! I thought it was just a lot of exaggeration and jokes. No, it's when I was little and got first, my dad would tell me to go outside and play in the yard. Yeah, yeah me too. To go oh, I grew up Get, the hell out of here. <laughs> Get out of here. Go, go ride your yeah. bike around the block. Yeah. You know. Well, go climb again. Yeah, well, I think that the tightening down of society for its safety is what got us to where we are now. Yeah. If, if they well, weren't a bunch of... It's been a steady ratcheting down of, of everything. It's called patient well, gradualism. And it's also got implied consent written all over it. Well, yeah, they use implied consent. Like that. Right, oh. right. But see, the public isn't aware that it's there. They don't really know what implied consent, how it flies to them. If, if I tell you I'm going to hit you in the face and you don't do anything to stop me, that means it's okay for me to do it. That's yeah, the way I they guess. Think. Yeah. yeah. Whoops. <laughs> yep. It's okay. Well, we're in a kind of a mess, I think, at this time. And, you know, collectively as a global thing. And when people figure out to back off the big thing and mind your own fucking business, then then life will be okay everywhere. But until then, the more we try to mix, the more chaos we're going to have. I think it's due to a great cycle that we go through every 26,000 years as the solar system <sighs> travels around the galaxy in a... Going up and down in your arm. Yeah, and going up and down just like a wavelength. Mm -hmm. Passing uh, passing through the the galactic equatorial plane twice every 26,000 years. That's why every every 12 to 13,000 years we have some sort of cataclysmic event because we go through pole shifts and all these things. We pass through... uh, Meteor uh, clouds, because it's been <laughs> happening uh, every twelve thousand years for how long? Four billion years or whatever, and uh, it's that's just it, it's it's the nature of the space yeah. we're passing through. Well, so I, I don't know. I don't think we've changed any like they go well. 10,000 years ago, people were like this. I don't think we were all, could have changed all that much in that short a period of time. Well, so I think what happened is they lied about the history. The oldest records we have, generally, yeah. uh, not right. talking about fossil records, but but actual recorded, recorded history, um, only goes back 12, 13,000 years. Yeah, see? Now, come on, there had to be, it's got to be older than that. I think, but then again, you know, that's my opinion based on whatever the hell I think I think. Civilization has risen and fallen. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, like you opened with, yeah. Yeah. Maybe we're, you know, I don't know why we're so sure of all these things we're so sure of when if you looked at your finger under a microscope, you wouldn't know it was your finger. (laughs) Your finger would disappear in the shit you would see uh, under, you know, uh, so many times, right? Larry? Five five blind men describing an elephant. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Right, but but we're taught to think we're so big and so important instead of being a necessary part of the the machine. Let's use the word machine, right? Mm -hmm. Or you're a component of the bigger thing. Like in a family, right? But we're, we're, all taught, we're all taught these opposite to reality freaking ideas that when you grow up, you come out with violence in politics. So, wait a minute. There had to be more than this. 
But here we are, and I, I think that we're stuck. We got violence in politics is stopping Larry's coil from becoming a, a physical reality for everybody. Not for long. Well, at the moment, the law is working again, yeah. How was your meeting this Monday? Ooh, I'll, I'll back off. Go on, Larry, give us an update. But right right before that, and I'm really excited about last Monday's meeting, a lot of people think that the planetary system that we live in is like a record, that it's flat. It's not. It's a cone. We're being drawn up at this point. We're being drawn up by the sun. That means that all the planets revolve in a cone shape below the sun. We are the rotors. The sun is the stator. That's why the plasma continues to burn and will never burn out until our orbits stop moving around. On the last one. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> we're not a flat plane. We're a cone. Huh. Well, there you go. How do you argue with that? See, it, well, there's okay. doesn't help to argue that. I don't know. Sounds in, good, though. In 2012, we reached the galactic center. Our Earth has been drawing, or our sun has been drawing us up to the galactic center. Now we're moving above the galactic center. That means that the sun is pulling the planets. Okay, all of them, not just all of them. Not right. just one, all of them. So instead of, say, being on a plane, like you said, right? Yeah. It's a it's a cone shape. Yeah. Wow. Well, that, okay, now I don't have a lot of knowledge where you guys are, but I get, I get the idea a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what changes the whole thing from that perspective in a lot of ways? Yeah. And people are going to argue with you. That's going to be the kick. And it's what brought up in the ROM. Sometimes Grim doesn't agree with things. Maybe we'll get a question or two. We're, we're not a flat earth, boys and girls. Oh, darn, man. I see, I wanted it to be flat. You know that? <laughs> I was hoping for flat. Well, actually, actually, it is sort of flat at the top and the bottom. <laughs> it's like an oval. Yeah, yeah. we're yeah. sort of squished. But whatever whatever is going on, I'm uh, such a small part of it that I can't feel it. I posted oh, really. a, a video in the chat. Uh, mm -hmm. The helical model, our solar system, is a vortex. There you go. That, and, uh, oh, wait. Now we got a visual. link to go with it. Right? Yeah, right. you can press that, put that in there. I will. Uh, going to, because you know what I learned on the dropping the coil show? <laughs> I learned what a vortex was. Yeah. Oh, I did it again. Okay. Ah, uh, I did it again. Twice in a row. Wow, I'm getting good at screwing up here. Okay. Uh, practice the old, the old heliocentric model of our solar system, boys and girls. Okay. That's, <laughs> I got it. I got it down, man. Uh, we're going through a massive lightning storm here, so if I get dropped off, it's not because I'm mad. That's okay. Thanks for the uh, warning up ahead of time. Yeah. We'll, we'll do what we can to get reconnected, too. So. Yeah. But if it's not possible, Larry did not quit. He was fired. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> no. They're going to get me if I don't shut up. <laughs> Oh, I hope not. Come on. I think that the, the public and the government and all that shit right now, these idiots got enough crap to deal with without worrying about you and your little generator. Right. right. So um, don't don't sweat it. <laughs> so I'm going to go the, uh, the first 30 seconds there is, is a depiction of what the mainstream uh, classical model of the solar system, what the... They want you to believe it. It is life, and then at thirty seconds, it starts showing you the vortex. What it really uh, now is this computer simulations, or how did they come to this? Discussion? Yeah, it's three D modeling. <laughs> no, man, we got a little satellite up there. Yeah, we took a picture, and 
posted it on Facebook, and I went and downloaded hey, it. Do I do I look like I'm a computer expert and I know how these things are done? Come on, God, give me a break. I, I I'm not an expert in everything. Uh, uh, I don't think I'm an expert at well two things. I can sleep really good, and I can be awake really good. This is a really good video. The one I, that you posted, the Healy, uh, yeah. heliocentric model? Okay. Yes. Yeah. It's in the notes, too, for you guys. Right? And it, for the people that look at this, follow the sine waves. Where all of our planets are different frequencies, that's why Saturn has rings. That's why the, the different planets have rings. And why the gas giant and the Saturn both have got a uh, uh, hexagram and the weather patterns at the North Pole. Uh, it, it's, all, it's all there. Uh, this may not be an exact representation of the waveform, but every planet puts out a different waveform, and that tells the the atomic frequency of that planet. So if you want to travel from Earth to one of these planets, all you've got to do is program that frequency into it, into your your ship or whatever, to get you there. That's how our our wormhole technology is going to work. You program that frequency into your coils. Hmm. Oh, so being yeah, see, our awareness makes us so limited, though. You know, depending on what what level of awareness you're at in in a physical reality world would depend on where you could take this. What what Larry just explained. Yeah, because some people, I me, mean, I'm I'm so deep rooted in physical where I'm sitting, I don't I don't get into the space travel being real. Well, we're space uh, okay. traveling right now. Huh? We're space traveling right now. Yeah. Okay. I, right. But we're <laughs> like I said, I'm such a small thing on this thing that, and I you can you wouldn't even know I was here from you know, twenty miles up in the sky. Couldn't see me. Oh. I don't know right, if this but, uh, model but, is accurate on this mm -hmm. video I posted. I just posted another one. The guy, he has a newer one. That, that, uh, uh oh. Two point oh. That do I change it? Uh, you could put, put change it or do both of them, whatever. The second okay, one is a little them. more, uh, more, I, I, I want to think this, this guy's actually plotted the courses of the planets and this is an accurate representation. Um, just from the way it looks, but it's hard to tell. Wow, and I was rooting for a flat Earth. Jeez. It's actually, it's actually showing the... Yeah, this one looks a little better. Okay, I'm going to put that one up also to give, the, uh, website that, give, uh, to give the crowd a choice. That, uh, because at dropping a coil show, you have a choice. <laughs> and then there's I, I don't hold on to just here's the oh crap what oh that link are you exploring your inner child absolutely uh, every day do you know what I'm learning how to do Larry what's that I'm living my second childhood through the internet <laughs> I haven't got to my first one yet oh yeah oh you didn't okay no I'm just nine oh it <laughs> says there it is flat in spots. Mm -hmm. Lucky, lucky, lucky. <laughs> lucky, lucky, lucky. That's all I can say. Like the salt flats. They call it flat. Oh. They're what, flat. what? They're flat. In Utah, right? It's flat in the salt flats. Well, what state are you talking about? Uh, I would imagine, yeah, that's Utah. Oh, okay, because... I'm not familiar with it because I've been to it. I'm familiar with it because I've either heard of it or read about it. Yeah. The Salt Flats. But I thought it was oh, in Utah. That's where they set all the land speed records. Salt Lake City. Oh, oh yeah, the fast car thing. Yeah, yeah. Right. Check car. Yeah. Would you do anything like that? Would you drive a car that fast? Heavens no. 
Rob? Maybe. Me, I, the if fastest I, I've ever been, I was the building yeah. of the car, and I trusted it. Mm. Wow. Yeah, but that was like 400 miles. How fast is 250, 300 miles an hour? Shit, this is unbelievable. An hour around the NASA tracks. Um, um, uh, that's too fast. Well, I don't know. I was in a, a passenger in a car at 140, and it yes. felt like they were sitting watching TV. Yeah. There's no there's no feeling of motion. It's weird. It's like you're sitting there looking at a TV show. <laughs> <laughs> so any faster, I don't know if I can deal with it. I think that was enough. Yeah. I'm not as daring as Rob. Me, and Larry said no. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't do it. I'm too old. <laughs> what, did I, you do it when you were young to see if you could survive it? I, yeah, I... I've driven at 100 miles an hour when I was young, yes. Oh, well, there you go. That's enough. Just doing that. I think myself, I've done 90, and that, but that was enough. I didn't want to push it any further than that. Well, let's gonna, let's gonna, talk gonna, about electricity yeah, a little bit more. I've, I've got something to say about the Mojave Desert. Ooh. Ooh. I went out there a few years back for a test, and going out... I saw things that probably nobody else has ever even dreamed about. But going through the Mojave Desert, there are big, huge plateaus that are green and lush on the top. Okay? And then you go down three or 400 feet, and there it is, flat desert with, with that it used to be under the water, yeah, but... Before that, it was plasma mined because all the plateaus out there have curved valleys. The, the, the indentations in the sides of them are curved. If it was erosion, they would be V-shaped. It, they're curved. That means that it was a plasma event. That whole area was plasma mined to the depth of three or four hundred feet. And you can prove that by, if you go to a, a, a gold mining operation, they have tailings of, that's the different size rocks that tumble off of the conveyor belt that separates the gold ore out, the, the gold nuggets. Those tailings all of the same size rocks are in each different pile, and they progressively get smaller rocks. Right. Okay? If you look out in the Mojave Desert, there are tailing piles everywhere. Huh. I'm, I'm just a firm believer that that was plasma mined thousands and thousands of years ago. Huh. That's just something to think about for all you guys that want to do a little weird thinking. Look at look at the sides of the plateaus. Look at the Grand Canyon. That is not erosion where the Colorado River ran through a valley. That is plasma by a plasma event where possibly some celestial body traveled close enough to arc between the Earth and and it. That's the same as on Mars. The great huge valley, the rift in Mars, is a plasma event. Interesting. So, so how do you explain that? I mean, in simpler, plasma event meaning it, it wasn't uh, it wasn't oh. na nature doing it. it was an outside lightning is plasma. plasma. Yeah, uh, like striking an arc with a with a torch. When you an electric torch, when you strike that arc, it makes a cup shape, a, a curved shape indentation in whatever material you strike it to. If it was water erosion, that would be a V. V. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So having that kind of uh, understanding of what you're looking at, why are they still teaching us the crap they teach us? Why are we not using hemp? 
Yeah. Because they, they don't want us to know. You're wrong with power people. and not be dependent on their electrical system or their That's or their it. petroleum. Uh, well, then, then they shit down. shit all over that by shitting everybody down. Then they saw how useless that was. Yeah. That, as far as needing to travel and shit, no, you don't need to go anywhere. You can go anywhere you need to go. You can walk there if you you know if you have to. But no. Yeah. We have to live matter? like this weird yeah. stuff, I guess. Live in this life. <laughs> Personal, Personal <laughs> levitation devices. Well, I see kids that, right? riding around on those uh, scooters and shit now and again. Yeah. You know, those uh, fancy, like, you, you move them with your damn brain waves or something. And they're pretty quick, and boom, you can, you can probably hurt yourself good by falling off it. But they run around on them every now and again. Mm -hmm. Little robots. Like George Jackson. <laughs> the Air Force now has a brain-controlled uh, jet. Yeah. Wow. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, uh, this sci-fi is coming true now. Oh, yeah, you, you think about what you want it to do, and it does it. Wow. Most the, folks these days are too scatterbrained to be able to use something like that, but that <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess you'd have to thought. tuned in really good. I, I might see a bird or a pretty cloud or something and say, oh, wow, and oh, boom, me. I'd be on the ground. Yeah, the, uh, the technology um, is way beyond... What uh, most people are even oh yeah imagine, uh, much less contemplate or be aware of our uh, our stealth bombers are held up in the air mostly by repulsion because they throw a negative charge on the bottom side of that plane when the earth is negative the sky is positive everything in between is some sort of a capacitor right okay so. You put a negative charge next to a negative charge, and it's going to repel. That's how they can go so slow and how they can go so fast. Because they're not oh. spending as much energy on keeping themselves in the air. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's fascinating stuff. Uh... Speaking of fascinating, let's go to Monday. Our Monday Science R&D group, uh, we had a bunch of, uh, a few electronics people that just weren't getting the, the metaphors that we were putting out. They weren't understanding with our animal descriptions like Schauberger did. So we went to an exact wiring diagram of how you wire each coil where you put the leads and what that will accomplish. And they understood, finally, they understood. So we, we now in the group are going about eliminating every electronic component and replacing it with a coil. Hmm. Uh, it was a major step forward, and that's going to bring us to, I think our first product is going to be a speaker that you cannot blow out because one of these styles of coils has perfect pitch, does not distort frequency at all. Hmm. So if you put a copper plate on it that will vibrate, that copper plate, yeah, sure, I guess you can blow it out, but... You can boom it as low as you want to or as high as you want to out of the same speaker. Hmm. And I really don't think you can blow them out. You'd have to put mega voltage to them to, to do any harm. Yeah, you burn the wire up before you burn them out, uh, blow them out. Yeah, that's that's the way I feel about it. Yeah. Uh, I think that'll that's that's the easiest thing that we can get out. We just have to put a pretty box around it. Yeah. 
Uh, well, I want one of them to sit on my front porch facing the road, so when one of these dump mobiles goes by, I can... Oh, um, God, I hate those. <laughs> and I can come back with something. <laughs> yep. Make their I'll hold so you can see the and blow his windows out. <laughs> Yeah, Damn. Yeah. You on there. <laughs> Guys are feisty. Yeah. I got one that comes by here yeah. and just rattles my windows. Yeah. Ah. You wake up two well, windows rattling at two o'clock in the morning, you'd be ready to do something too. <laughs> but pretty soon you guys will be armed with 5G. You'll be able to take them out. Oh, yeah, 5G here. Pretty well, soon we'll at least on for an EMP gun. Now that's what I want. Well, you know how to make the best of what Which, there is. That's I was insinuating. Me, I wouldn't know what to do with a 5G thing if they gave me one. So, I probably won't get one. You just download movies faster. I don't even download movies slowly right now, so I, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Me neither. I don't down... I, you yeah, know what? I got, I got 50 million on the internet, and, I, you know, I never use somebody, it. I never use my a fraction of it. I'm going to do it someday. I'm going to download a movie. I just ain't going to do it today. I use it very occasionally yeah. uh, if I download a new game or something. Well, you know. look, it's all a trap, no matter how we, you know, how we define it to each other. We're all in this trap, okay? But some people just got a better trap than other people, I think. Yeah. More yeah. populated. Yeah, well, that turned out to be overcrowding. So, whew. I mean, it 10, 15 megabit is more than enough for more than one computer to be able to watch YouTubes all day long. You know, as far as watching videos yeah. goes. Yeah. 15 megabit is, is all the internet. If you've got a good solid 15 megabit that works, it's, a, it's good enough for, for a small household of one or two computers. Being on the internet, you go four or five, you know, big family. You may want twenty, twenty-five megabit. Any more than that, it's just overkill. Yep. So, so really, um, it comes down to latency is way more important than actual bandwidth. Latency and and uh, good solid connection, you know. Uptime is more important. So the group that's been using RLM for a, a, a backdrop, I don't know what you call it, a support system. Uh -huh. But we, we've all, well, we're all doing this from our homes. Yeah. So it's relative to the equipment you have and the service that you get. But however bad it is, Mary's always complaining about her service. But she's done a shitload of radio. Even with yeah. a, a terrible service. Yeah, well, yeah, she's she's kind of rural out there, so mm -hmm. I've, I've never heard her talk about what actual kind of connection she's got. But um, yeah, the, even the streaming we're doing right now is 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 minuscule. It's what a sixty-four k stream, Grimmy? Uh When it's going out live. You know, 64K, that's, you know. My first computer was a 35K. 48K. <laughs> so we're, we're, this actual uh, live stream that we're doing right now is going out to, at the speed of modems. You know, of the old modems. That's how much bandwidth this this broadcast uses 48k 48 kilobits per second so, I had Windows 3.1 yeah I have 50 megabits uh, internet service well down I have 5 megabit up so I'm, I'm going out at 5,000 times Oh, I've got a, a technical question about uh, a website I, I'd like to get an opinion from you guys on. I read today that uh, Donald Trump is threatening um, Twitter 
Oh, yeah. Because they're threatening him with they're going to take him off. They're not going to support his. Yeah. Uh, let him be on it. They're going to ban him from it. He's right. He, he's going to sign an okay. executive order. Okay. He's going to order them. To do what? It's a uh, private business, isn't it? He's going to shut down privately owned companies, <laughs> including Twitter. Wait, Trump's going to shut Twitter down. And he, he's going to make them change the rules so that they're not, they say that they're free speech and they're not. Uh, even even my Facebook page gets censored heavily. Every time I try to post something that's conservative, they don't do it. People have, have actually followed me that they're not showing up on our on our company webpage, our company Facebook page. So it, 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 we're being censored heavily, because I know that I've got more than a thousand followers. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Wow. Well, we between both of our pages, we've got pretty close to twenty seven hundred. But that's just what they show us. And I've had people that recently told me that they that they followed my page and yet they don't show up. It, it, they're not in my list. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're they're playing with that shit. Mm hmm. Manipulating the hell out of it. Well, because it's the true numbers of people that are that are waking up and and uh, looking for um, the truth, quote quote. Um, it's it's pretty massive, and it's scaring the living shit out of them. They've even said that. Um, what was his? Uh, who was it? Brzezinski was saying how worried he was about the people he, the way people are waking up to what's going on. I think it was him. Um big nose Brzezinski. <laughs> the grand chessboard author. If you've ever heard what know what that is. Anyways yeah, it's uh crazy shit. I, think it's all I don't the read books. Simulation. They've got a they've got a model of the world and the entire world and all the people in it uh, running on quantum computers. Hmm. That's been that was started back in the seventies in, in the Beast system. If you remember that, I remember the rumors of it or reading there something. But that was yeah, that's that was the beginning of the data collection phase for this world model that they put together. Um, the Beast was a, a system that was uh, gathering and databasing uh, all the people on the planet. And so... It's a monitoring system. Well, yeah, well it was, it's, a, it's a collecting and categorization system that... Uh, is creating a database of all the people on the planet. And so they've taken that information and then they've plugged it in um, and they've got all the Google Street View stuff and the Google Maps. If you go on Google Maps mm -hmm. and you zoom in and you look at a town and you zoom all the way down in and you see to the block level, and you see every house is outlined, and it's exactly where that house is, okay? And and the shape of the house and everything is accurate. They have an actual picture of mine that shows up, and they took the picture on a day that one of my students was in the front driveway practicing. Uh-huh. Yeah, and the quality of the pictures you see on on the actual live Google side is, is nothing compared to what they actually have either. I mean, they can get as, as fascinating as it can be on some of that stuff. I mean, you can really zoom in and see details 
you know, pretty good detail of yeah. everything, you know. And with the 5G, they'll be able to read the date on a dime from the satellite. Yeah, well, that's, that's not related, but anyway. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. It's kind of related. Well, <coughs> there's, there's there's more related they, have, than they have the optics to do that, and that's already been done. It's already up. They've already got it. Mm-hmm. And Hans will be able to tell you about that. He's he's an engineer on one of them satellites that can see through your roof. But the point I was getting at on the on the Google Maps, they have a system, the real Google system that they have access to. They can go into that, click on every house, and it'll pop up a little box and tell you who lives there. And what they did, what they had for lunch, and you know what they bought at the grocery store and where their phone has been and the whole thing. This surveillance tracking system, I mean, it's been predicted for a long, long time. And there, it's, it's, it's the, the 5G is what that's giving them is the connectivity to all the Internet of Things devices. These are all these, you know, your refrigerators and washing machines and all that stuff. I talked about that last week. But yep, uh, people don't understand how just how far the technology has gone, and I'm not even touching on anything that's really out there. This is, I mean, pretty much uh, old. Realistic to most people, uh, most people can grasp and comprehend. What I'm saying. Um, well, the people that follow this show probably are at, that at least understand electrical stuff, because that's pretty yeah. much been the premise yeah. of this pr- the dropping the coil. Right, right. So that's the quality of listener that you get, as far as what they're into compared to you. So you, yeah, <laughs> wow, yeah, you guys have hit some. Uh, Topics over the few bits that we've done that were pretty deep. Wavelengths and frequencies, pyramids and electric and all. Man, it's been interesting as fuck. Just saying. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm well, it's, it's an electric universe. It's the yes. electromagnetic universe, to be more accurate. Yep. Uh, it makes me feel um, pretty small on the planet when I stop and think about it. You know, when I think, wow, boy, on this great big fucking thing I'm on. Well, I'm not very big. You know, but then you put me with like a million others, and that's that's different. We're, we're all thrill riding on the earth, you know, because we're, we're traveling. Right. I don't know. Do you know how fast we travel through space? I think it's something um, like 70,000 miles an hour. <laughs> Come on, God. Really? Is that yeah, the really. Of, is that the speed I mean, of Earth, Earth orbiting? Or no, that's that the sun the, pulling us. That's the sun traveling uh, through the galaxy. Yeah. Okay, so the speed yeah. of the sun traveling through the that's galaxy right. is 70,000 miles per hour, plus to compound that with us rotating behind the sun as it drags us through the galaxy. And then the planet itself rotating. Yeah. So at different points in time, we'd be moving a little faster or a little slower because the, the planet rotates at what? 7,000 miles per second or something like that? Or 7,000 miles per I don't know. And then uh, we don't even have a clue how fast the galaxy is traveling through the universe. Right. Then how come you can't feel it? I mean, they, we're so small on it. Like yeah. that. We're yeah. inside the magnetic bubble. It would have to be a relative oh. calculation. That's why we don't feel inertia except that which we create upon ourselves. Right. Yeah. Wow. Well, it's, it's, too, it's too complicated for me, so I'm going to go with the flatter. Speed. It's like free fall. I'm wow. still going back to flat earth. You guys are too smart. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can get the guys too deep for you, Flash. 
Uh, I'm my head hurt. <laughs> <You need to, laughs> everything's round. <laughs> Come on, guys. You compress. Right. I'm not a third goal. I'm going to make that, too. My wife's the circle. Come on. Everything's a circle. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So, I was above so below. Circles and pyramids. Yep. The yin and yang of things. But the, the personal experience and the verbal description of yourself in this life with all this shit you're all surrounded by. And then we all agree that we see it differently, but it can only be explained in one proper way. <laughs> because, yep. well, it has to be that way, whatever that is. And then you spend your whole art time in life, you know, listening or arguing about different opinions of it. <laughs> when That's it can right. only have happened one way. It, it's all different themes on the same trilogy. Vibration, electricity, and magnetism. Yeah. It's a better explanation than anything I've heard before. Got gold, uh, what did I hear before? Uh, gold, oil, and uh, dollars, diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, outside of that, hey, pretty much, to be really honest about it, as far as guidance towards what is all this about, it's about whoever's got the most toys with. Well, mm -hmm. you know, an electric generator. Yeah, well, but I, I'm not very, I'm not very aware of all that as much as I could be if I paid more attention to it. You know, I take that, the the real stuff in life for granted because it just works, and never have really spent a lot of time questioning how it worked like you do. Ah, uh, that. My big question all through school was why. Right, and until I hit my 50s or so, uh, I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, but what I did do is I acquired the skill of finding people that have knowledge. I have a question. I seek an answer. Mm -hmm. There you go. All those years I didn't bother with any of that. There's somebody that did. I'll seek their counsel. Boom. So life is, you know, life is everything that you put into life, you get right back, I think. Yeah. But sometimes it, it doesn't look like what you think it is when you're looking at it. Things don't always appear the same. Five years down the road, you might see them different. You know, good, bad, or indifferent. But oh, yeah. Because being, being human, isn't that fucking wild? And it explains all the electricity theories and stories and movies and all that I've ever heard. Because this is all me bouncing off of other things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I was unpacking recently. came across something I wrote like 20 years ago. And I'm not going to get into details of what it was, but um, I, I was like, who the fuck was that guy? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's not. I couldn't. No, I couldn't have wrote that. <laughs> but yeah, wow. The, we change. Uh, We're always changing. Change is the only constant. Well, how come it doesn't feel that way when you're doing it? <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> That's that uh, mm -hmm. macro vision versus micro vision. Mm -hmm. Experience. Five blind men describing an elephant. You're, you're too close. Yeah. You're so mm -hmm. close you don't see it until you look back 20 years and go, holy fuck. I used to be that guy. Yeah. Well, you know what I like about the uh, electric stories and the, the links and all these things that we've been doing on the show for the last few months? Because yeah. they're all stable. There's no maybes or I think or this could be is about any of this shit. This is all very exactly to the freaking letter, and this is how you do it. And if you don't do it like this, it will not work. And I believe they've got a word to describe that, and it would be perfect. Huh? 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 Uh, well, I'm sure that there's a lot of improvements that can be made on our equipment. 
Okay, but there's things that you can only go so far, and and after that, any kind of improvement on it would just be polished. You're polishing a diamond already. Yeah. To okay, but to a technician or somebody that's you know involved in this at, at the level you're at, you'd see it differently. But let's let's go through a little bit of, of technical stuff. This is a good okay. spot for that. All right. When you have a piece of wire that's X number for resistance, and you have another piece of wire that's the same amount of resistance. When you add those two wires together, you get more resistance, right? Yeah. Okay. So on the coils, you have a specific resistance for each circuit. When you add two circuits together, that resistance lowers. When you add three circuits together, that resistance drops to zero. When you add four, it's still zero. When you add five, it's still zero. When you add six, it's still zero. So that's something that normal things don't do. The formulas for for any kind of, of electricity is voltage divided by amperage equals resistance. Voltage divided by resistance equals amperage. Amperage times resistance equals voltage. It's that simple in the three-dimensional electric world. But there's five dimensions, like I keep saying, magnetism and frequency, so it's a completely new animal with the way these coils are designed, increasing the magnetic field. They're using this in computers now at, with supercooled conductors to increase the magnetic field and magnetically decrease the resistance. We're doing this at room temperature. Uh, but I don't know why that popped into my head, but another bit of, of strangeness that comes out of a coil. And it's all in geometry. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 it's like bringing something into focus. Um, as, oh. opposed, as opposed to being uh, dirty power. Like yeah. you're talking about the dirty power with the electronics and the spikes and blah, 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 blah. And yeah. what the coils do is they align things so that everything is in focus and not fighting against itself. Exactly. Harmony. Yeah. 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 We, we have two circuits next to one another, and then an empty space on each side. And two circuits, empty space, all the way around the coil, up to as many circuits as you want. What this does is each of the circuits interacts, uh, induces the one next to it, interacts with it, both magnetically and electrically, and the empty space on both sides allows that field to grow. But as that empty space gets closer to the hole in the donut, it compresses that magnetic field, increasing the magnetism. Not only that, but as these circuits go around the donut, around the ring of the donut, they're compressing that inside the ring and causing tornadoes inside that ring to rotate. And once again, increasing the magnetic field out of a standard toroidal coil. Vortex. Yeah, making three vortexes. And out of the standard ele electrical toroid coil, we've increased that field from 4,000 milligauss magnetically to 18,000 milligauss at three volts. Yeah. I don't do those kind of measurements. <laughs> okay. But this is what it's called, technical stuff. What's the largest uh, gauge wire you've used to build a coil with? So far, 16, and that's good for 10 amps. And we get 60 amps out of it. I've been seeing an image in my mind recently, lately, or daydreaming about uh, this 
a coil made with a very heavy gauge wire, um, maybe a eight or a six. Okay, a good heavy stiff solid copper wire, right? Mm -hmm. And you could bend this wire into the shape without a donut. Our donuts are air core anyway. I yes, know, you can. Know. Yes. But making it hold its shape is something that would be difficult without a base. Yeah. And so the way I'm picturing it is with like just a framework, like a lattice type framework inside. Um, just holding yeah. it at certain points to keep the the general shape and then the have it have uh, you can have brackets that that because uh, on that scale of wire you can have a little bit of gap between them right so you could build a like I could, that, I could no I could three D print a strip that would that would clamp onto every uh, circuit of the wire every every wrap and it could snap into it with just a thin. As long as it kept it flat without overlapping, yeah. Yeah, no, no, yeah. yeah. I mean, we're talking, you know, quarter-inch thick wire. Yeah. Our our newest design has got knife slots in the coil that go to the inside of it. That the instead of your hand being horizontal, it's vertical. The wires are in the holes in the slot vertically. And that we call the Saturn coil because it produces a magnetic field like the rings of Saturn. Right. Uh, it's also the most dangerous coil that we've got. It'll kill you real quick. Uh, yeah. This coil has to be operated inside of another coil in order to be safe. Yeah. And, that, you know, that's, that's something that's been uh, kicking around in my mind, too. Uh, number one rule is never look into the eye of the right. Gorgon, just like Fantastic Planet. Right, right. You, we've, we've heard all that. But don't what, what, what don't what, stick what, your head over the hole. What's going on? If how is that? How does that harm you? What's going on? What's coming out of that hole? What's coming out of the, the center of the donut? That's a very strong magnetic field that is monopolar and will disturb your brain waves. Okay. And so it causes yeah. your brain to malfunction and shut down? Yeah. Something along those lines? Would that yeah. mean be something like an EMP that you could point at a car and try the electronics in it? Exactly. So you're basically talking about an EMP weapon. Yeah. That's that's why Faraday cages are paramount and other protective yeah. things as, as you're working that's on Faraday them. Faraday cage with a shutter. <laughs> <laughs> let it let it glass to look out of. <laughs> and it, people that are making Faraday cages, yes, it can be uh, like a... a uh, a bunch of squares on the wall made out of out of wire. Mm -hmm. Each crossing has to be electrically and mechanically connected. Each place that the wires cross, and also the holes in your squares and your screen have got to be smaller than the wavelength of the frequency that you're using or that you plan to produce. If they're not, they're not functional. It's like putting up a wire a wire fence to keep snake out. Don't work. Yeah. Well, I mean, at that point, you might as well just go with solid plate. Uh, yeah, exactly. And does uh, the type of metal you use uh, make a difference? It's simply in the conductivity and the and the amount that it can hold before it saturates. Uh -huh. As long as you got it, it'll never saturate, right? 
Right, as long as it's grounded, right, it will never saturate. Okay. So, uh, like, aluminum versus copper, say. Is there any you, you, real you just difference have, in, in how well it's going to protect you, basically? If it's solid, no. If it's wire, just go one wire size bigger with aluminum than you use in the copper. Yeah. Well, that's on the electrical side. So we're talking about Faraday cages. The same on the Faraday cage. Well, at that point, again, solid is the only way oh, really good okay. if you're really trying to be uh, all-encompassing. Yeah, if, if you've got a small millimeter wavelength and and uh, copper screen that's made out of 40-gauge wire, uh -huh. that is not enough to handle... Uh, a 40 amp uh, EMP wave. Right. So you've got to, whatever EMP amount that you're putting out, you have to have wire that is suitable for that amount of energy. Right. So just a standard, like, uh, 26 gauge stainless steel plate. Yeah, that would be all right. Just put it in a stainless steel box, like in any appliance. Yep. So, no. but back to my. Yeah, you know, we only got a few minutes. The large okay. gauge, the large gauge wire, using some kind of lattice work or or, or whatever to hold the shape. It's like say using a six gauge wire uh, on like about a six foot size coil is, yeah. what, is what's popping into my brain here as, as long as your same ratio the 238 ratio uh -huh. is maintained in your donut shape right yeah yeah using all the same yeah. ratios and, 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 and yeah uh, uh, yeah a six foot donut would probably have an eight inch hole yeah That's an eight inch hole Actually, the 45-inch donut has an 8-inch hole. Okay. That's what you're using to make your big generator, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The 45-inch 12-circuit uh, with an 8-inch uh, uh, knife coil inside it. Yeah. So, um, a 6-foot, which is... Uh, Nearly double. A little less than two foot bigger. Yeah. yeah. Using six or eight gauge wire on the circuits, even if it's only a six circuit, say. What's the math on that? In less than a minute. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you can't do that in your head, man. I <laughs> see so you're, you're probably using... Uh, uh, It would be around 2,000 feet of wire. Well, okay, let's go to six. It's easier to figure. Uh, give me a second. Start talking. Let me, let okay. me do some numbers. Well, we're down to the last couple of minutes. Uh, Flash, you can okay. before we... We'll work on the numbers later. Yeah, yeah. We'll Come back next week. Come Good. back, yeah. Answer to... What yeah, you, you know, you got can start the show next week. Gauge wire. <laughs> <laughs> Rob doesn't want to go big, does he? <laughs> well, oh, no. You, see, you can you can do all this with more than one coil on a smaller scale. You yeah. can put seventeen coils together. Use the AC, the twelve volts AC that we create in one of our coils. Right. That's got a fatty callback array in it to produce the power that will spin one big ball magnet in the center coil in a bigger coil and have 16 other smaller coils with ball magnets in them that the magnetic ball and the big coil spinning will make all the little coils spin. You've yeah. got your free energy to make that first one spin, all the rest of them spin, and you power small industry with 17 coils. And there you have it. There you have it. And you heard it's it right that easy. on the Dropping the Coil Show. 
Let's and it's Queen Tala. Flash and myself, Robert. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Hey, you guys. Say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs>